networking is the most important thing for you. Um, spend a day in Lemon Stir and go meet with the you know three plumbers. Go meet with a couple electricians if you get their time for a coffee. Um, you know, meet them on a site that they're working. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Creating Wealth Podcast, where I, Kyle, from Kyle Curtin Real Estate, interview local top dogs in the real estate investing, wealth building, and personal finance industries. Let's build together. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 103 of the Creating Wealth Podcast. Today, we have the great pleasure of chatting with Phil MacArthur. Phil is a principal over at Windrift Management, in addition to being the Senior Vice President at Compass Real Estate. What's going on, Phil? How are you, man? Excellent. Thanks, Kyle. I'm doing well. Uh, thanks for having me on. I've been uh, following your podcast for a little bit now, and I appreciate that you had me on, and I, l- I love what you're doing here. You a lot of really great information that you're putting out. Thank you so much, man. It, it means a lot. It does. So to kind of jump right in, man, you know, tell us kind of your superhero backstory, like what what kind of got you interested in in real estate and anywhere you want to start off is perfect. <laughs> yeah, certainly. So I have a pretty funny uh, story in regards to how I got into real estate. I was actually in college, um, a 19 year old sophomore at Suffolk University in Boston, and I had played basketball my freshman year and I knew that I was going to be done on the team. I had injured my back. And a, um, a teammate of mine was doing rentals in the city for a real estate shop, Warren Residential. And he suggested that I go and get my real estate license. Uh, so ended up getting my real estate license at 19, starting as a rental agent downtown where you're doing rentals that are, you know, some of them are a thousand, you know, $2,000, let's call it now, uh, um, up to $15,000 a month and making a one month's commission um, on all that. And then I've grown my business from there um, with a real estate sales team and then also as a real estate investor. That's phenomenal, man. That's super cool. I know it's it's always like really crazy, like hearing about like some of the rents in, in Boston and stuff like that. Once in a while, like I'll pop onto the MLS and just look at like the most expensive rentals like in the entire state. And obviously it's probably going to be Boston, right? And like seeing these like really crazy yeah. numbers and like I'm like adding up in my head. I'm like, oh, like if they're paying the broker fee and first months and security or or whatever the mix up is, I'm just adding up the numbers. I'm like zero, 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 zero. I'm like, holy crap, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I've had somebody put up, I think it was like 90,000 um, for the deposits at one point, which blew my mind, you know, as a 22 year old or so. But um, it's it's fun being on that side of transactions as well. Definitely. Wow. So were you more on, <laughs> were you more on kind of like the, the buying side, like helping people get into those units? Or were you more on kind of like the listing side, like starting off? Yeah. So uh, originally I was helping tenants move into um, apartments, right? Um, whether it was a full service building or a beautiful brownstone down in the back bay of Boston. Um, but my real estate sales team or my real estate sales business, excuse me, as I was getting going, I actually transitioned into listings. I moved into a condo building in Boston um, and began marketing myself within the Seaport District in 2014. Um, within, you know, Seaport District has Fort Point, which is right next to it, this old historic brick buildings, lofts. Um, so I, the building that I moved into, I began to just market myself as a real estate agent. And I knocked off a couple million dollar listings within probably six months of moving into that building. And uh, since then, it's just continued to grow and grow and grow. Um, but geo farming essentially is is what I ended up doing without even realizing it. That's beautiful, man. What was kind of like your um, I guess kind of like your <laughs> like your method of of touch, I guess, that you preferred? Like, was it like door knocking, like going down the hall and everything, or like sending mailers? Like, what was kind of your go to? Yeah. So my first where I got the majority of these first listings was just set, sending um, mailers. Nice. But I'm not talking like the pretty mailer, that tie gloss and all this, you know, beautiful, you know, that costs quite a bit. I would go into our office at 10 o'clock at night, um, print off a, a letter that was kind of like a newsletter about the neighborhood with what was going on. And I'd hand write the owner's name in, sign the piece of paper at the bottom. There's no letterhead on it. There's nothing. Um, and then hand write 
you know, envelopes to 150 units. Um, and that was my big thing in college that kind of propelled me to, you know, be the, the neighborhood expert, which is important as a real estate agent, um, and also provide value with information of happenings within the neighborhood. That's beautiful, man. That's super cool. It's, it's always really fascinating kind of, you know, how different people like to get that like personalized aspect. Like if it's like, you know, like handwriting, like the, the property address and like the return address or you know, some people use stamps, like it's, it's really cool. Like how like creative and stuff you can be. Um, that's awesome, man. Yeah. And, and for me, I figured, you know, I have a mailbox, you have a mailbox. What's the stuff that I throw out, you know, mm -hmm. the, the ads, right. You know, if I receive an envelope that's handwritten, you know, with my chicken scratch, you know, hieroglyphics on there, I'm going to be intrigued to at least open it and give it like more than a five second read, then see the, you know, the, the postcard that has the real estate agent, the property address on it, um, in a, in one photo on it, um, where, you know, that's immediately in my hand into the trash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. so that's, you know, that's where I began to distinguish myself there. Yeah, I definitely agree. And it's, it's really interesting. I mean, even like today, you know, looking at like the mailers and stuff that companies send out, um, there's one in particular that that I actually kind of like. It's I think it's like Anderson Windows or something like that. Like this one, like it, I think it looks like an invoice and like like it looks like it's all like basically it just looks like a quote with like really messy like writing on it. I'm like, ooh, I actually kind of like that. Like that's I mean, I throw it out anyway, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's differentiates <laughs> yeah. itself, you know, it's cool. But it, it you remembered that it was Anderson, right? You didn't, you know, and that's the big thing is keeping people involved and, you know, being front of mind, whereas it could have been, you know, Harvey window, if it was just a generic thing that was, you know, Harvey window, you know, here's our special for, you know, quarter two or whatever. Right. Exactly. And it's kind of funny, man, because they got what they wanted. Like now we're talking about it in conversation, like it's going on the Internet, like you got me, Anderson, <laughs> you know, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's what it's all about, you know, is <laughs> is being front of mind as often as you put, as you can as you can potentially be when you're selling a product or yourself, right? <laughs> right? A hundred percent. So tell us, I guess, where kind of like the um where kind of everything started, like on the investing front. Like you were doing rentals, like starting to really ramp up the agent side. I guess what was kind of like the catalyst of like, oh, you know, like um like helping people buy and sell like all these properties and everything like uh, you know all this crazy stuff's going on like what about if i took a different role like what was kind of like the i guess kind of like the point that that started to kind of change things yeah so this is a great story that i love telling um i had saved i had always worked you know so i'd saved up a, a, a couple funds through high school and stuff like that and then of course you know i was selling $7 million a year or so when I was a uh, sophomore in college, junior in college. So I was building a business and, and had quite a nice little fund set up um, to go acquire a property. And I was considering buying a condo for myself in another neighborhood in Boston that was kind of on the up and up. Um, and I <laughs> was essentially talked out of doing that and talked into buying a multifamily by a colleague of mine who sat me down in our office and gave me the pros and cons of owning a condo individually for myself, which yes, of course, it had great appreciation value, but it, otherwise it was just for me. Or what was the benefit of owning a three family in Gloucester, Massachusetts, where I grew up, that I could live in a unit, rent out the other two, um, receive that cash flow after I fixed up the units to make them you know, a little bit more livable and you know, towards the top end of the market for, for rental rates and go from there. At that point, <laughs> I had nothing to say that was beneficial for me to own my own first condo, um, <laughs> where maybe I had, you know, a roommate, uh, opposed to buying a three family. And that's how I got into it. <laughs> that's beautiful, man. And like, that's, that's what I really love is like, sometimes that's all it takes, you know, is like, that one time that you sit down with somebody like that, like one sentence that somebody says, that's like, hold on, wait a minute. Like, maybe there's a different path to go and like it's it's like a whole different thing and then all of a sudden like the gears are turning everything's starting to move and it's like whoa like maybe i don't want that condo anymore <laughs> yep exactly and, and that's the power of having mentors mm -hmm. 
right? Um, you know, having somebody that you can rely on and, you know, bounce ideas off of that has more experience than you and ha- is like-minded to help you kind of facilitate and create your own path. Definitely. <laughs> the thing that I love about that too, man, is like, I feel like sometimes when people kind of talk about like the whole concept of mentorship, like, you know, like you hear once in a while, like people just go out and be like, oh, you know, so-and-so, like, do you want to be my mentor? And it's like, just this really awkward, like type of thing from what I've found, man, is like, I feel like it's really indirect. And it's like, I feel like a lot of people are like each other's mentors in like a super indirect way. And like, it's, it's a lot less than just like, all right, like I need to go find Phil and he's going to be my mentor. And like, we're going to get rich together, you know, but it's actually like, oh, you know, like Phil knows a ton about, you know, like three families in Gloucester and like that area. And -and so-and-so knows a bit about this and like this guy's an attorney, like, and just kind of like creating that team indirectly to be able to like, just have all those people that you can go to, you know, and and have all the experts in those areas. It's like, that's what I I love about it. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that you're doing with the podcasts, you know, there's so much information out there for people to pick two or three things from five or 10 different people now where information is just in abundance. Um, of course, you need to find somebody that's done it, one, and then also two, you know, has you know, the credibility behind it, right? Um, but there's so many people out there that I think that are willing to help regardless of what industry that you want to get into or what your experience level is. Um, you know, I think, you know, that's, that's one of the, the things that's kind of helped me propel to where I am uh, today. Of course, I, I definitely agree, man. You know, and it's, um, that was actually, I was having a, <laughs> a conversation with somebody today about this. And it's really interesting because of exactly what you mentioned, you know, like there's literally like an over- I don't even know what the word is like there's just like so much information out there and like it's not it's not the information like trying to acquire the information that's like the actual concerning part i feel like it's more or less like coming back to the individual and it's like oh you know do you actually want to go out and get that information like what's kind of like the rate at which you want to learn this like i was talking to the gentleman earlier and he was like yeah dude like i listen to like the first couple hundred episodes of the bigger pockets podcast and like a really short amount of time he's like i just threw it on in the car like to and from and learned like a whole education just on like my normal path to work i'm like yeah a hundred percent you know and like it's just it's crazy i mean even like free information man like there's like just this abundance of of knowledge and like all this crazy stuff going on literally like if you don't know the difference between you know, a, a tenant at will agreement and a regular lease. Google is literally at the end of our fingertips, man. Like if you hit the home button right now and you go to Google, like literally just type it in and hit enter, <laughs> you know? And, but it's, I feel like, like I said, like it, it almost comes back to the individual because there's such an abundance of that information, like available for everybody that it's just kind of like, how much do you yourself actually like want to learn that? And like, and that type of thing. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think now we're in a place where if you're a doer, you have the greatest opportunity to do more now than there ever has been um, because there's more information out there. But I also do truly believe that, you know, people, there, people our, our age now are not necessarily as willing to withstand punches in the face, you know, literally. <laughs> um, so, you know, the re the rate of rejection of people that turns into failure and moving into something else is so high. Um, you know, real estate agents have a 95% chance of failure in exiting from the industry within a five year period of time. It's incredible to me um, that there's few, there's just not a ton of people that are willing to continue to pound the sand and persevere through difficulties. Everyone at some point, regardless of what you do and in within your life is going to be going through difficult things. You just need to persevere. And that's what I think a fair amount of what success is built off of is just persevering. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. And it's it's really interesting, <laughs> you know, and, and kind of like the the day and age that we're in, you know, and I feel like that's, it's a lot less common, you know, than, than maybe it was back in the day of like, 
oh, you know, like just keep toughing it out, man. Like you're getting kicked in the face a bunch of times. Like it's it's part it's part of the plan. Like it's cool. And like I feel like just not a lot of people want to do that anymore. You know, and it's like, oh, you know, like this thing didn't work out. Like nobody called me back from my campaign or whatever it was. All right, like I gotta do go do something else now, you know, and it's it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, one of my favorite quotes, uh, I'm a somewhat of a Tony Robbins guy, pretty big Tony Robbins guy, I guess <laughs> most of people would say, and he, he always says that, you know, we underestimate what we can do within 10 years, what we, we overestimate what we can do in a year, but underestimate what we can do within 10 years. Uh, and that's something that I heard when I was, you know, maybe even in high school, um, I played sports growing up. So, uh, it's always stuck with me and been something that I, you know, view and think about constantly as I'm going through, you know, business and trying to grow a sales team and trying to continue to uh, build a real estate investing business as well. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent, man. I, I do absolutely love that quote. And like, the more you think about it, like, and how it actually applies to like you as an individual, like it really makes you think, you know, of like, what are you trying to do in the short term? Like, what does 2023 look like? And what does like 2033 look like, you know? And it's like, huh, like, how do I? <laughs> yeah, definitely. So that's, a... <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, guys, I, I apologize for the, uh, for the coffin. I'm getting over a cold there. But um... it's winter in Massachusetts. If you don't have a cold right now, you haven't been outside enough. <laughs> <laughs> you're not really living if you're not getting over a cold right now. But um yeah, that's that's phenomenal, okay. man. So kind of take us through. Um, so you bought that three family in Gloucester. Take us kind of through that. Like, was that an on market and off market, uh, like fully filled up, vacant? What was what was kind of the story with that one? Yeah, definitely. Uh, def you know, certainly one of my favorite deals to talk about so far. Uh, I purchased that property on market. Uh, this was in 2015. Um, and I just graduated college, I remember. And there was one vacant unit, two units that were going to become vacant within 30 days of closing and then 90 days within closing. So I went in and put down 20% on the purchase price, which was the biggest mistake to me at that point, it, looking back on it now. And something that I've learned from is if you have the ability to put down 5% on your first multi, and it still provides you a solid return, absolutely do that opposed to getting caught up in putting down 20%, you know, allocating most of your liquidity to this one purchase. And now you're a little bit tighter and don't have the necessary funds to do the work that you need to do or have a cushion for yourself financially, um, ended up getting the property up and running, rented out each of the three units uh, within six months. Within a couple of years from there, there uh, I did a cash out refi, took out all my money, and then went to go buy an eight unit apartment building up in New Hampshire. Um, in 2021, I ended up selling this three family in Gloucester and 1031 exchanging it into 18 apartments in uh, 20 apartments, excuse me, 20 apartments um, throughout New Hampshire. Uh, and since then, my, my investing game plan has all been uh, looking to buy within the Granite State. That's beautiful, man. Holy crap. How was it kind of nice. jumping from, um, you know, getting the three family stabilized, like, you know, learning a lot of lessons and stuff along the way to, you know, having a little bit of time of like self-management and stuff like that going by and kind of thinking about like the next step. Like, were you kind of thinking about the commercial space, like for your next deal, I guess? Or were you kind of thinking like, oh, you know, like maybe I could do another three family, like? No. So I, funny story again, you know, everything for me has just kind of happened, not necessarily out of the blue because I'm a very obsessive person and my goals that I, I have, I think about them constantly. Um, I knew that I wanted to buy another building, but I also was spending a fair amount of time up in Sunapee, New Hampshire with um, a buddy who had a lake house up there and we were golfing at a golf course every weekend. Um, so I was looking for a multifamily property up off the lake that I could keep one of the units for myself um, and came across this eight unit apartment building in 2017. It needed a fair amount of work that was all done after purchase, but it was priced at $350,000 at that time. Um, so I ended up buying that, fixing it up in 
never ended up moving into one of the apartments and using that as my uh, <laughs> vacation retreat. <laughs> You saw that return of all the units, man. You're like, ooh, like that can drive back and forth to golf. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, exactly. I, it, and, you know, I was staying at his, I was staying at his, his uh, lakefront place anyway. So it was a, it was a win-win. And once I got kind of addicted to that cash flow and, and uh, that rent coming in and buying assets that, you know, were appreciating exponentially within you know the past 10 years you know let's call it six or seven years now which this that period of time has been like any other right so you have to be aware of that moving forward but you know i was happy to have been in the space buying acquiring properties at that point 100 percent, man that's absolutely awesome so how um how did you kind of find that one like were you I guess, you know, doing more like Mark uh, direct to seller and stuff like that, or like just through like networking. No, I feel so like there's a story with that one. I'm excited. <laughs> most of my deals as I was first getting going were on the MLS. <laughs> yeah. Really? Most of my deals as I was getting going were on the MLS, um, which is kind of bizarre. There was a four family that was priced a little bit higher than this eight unit that was beautiful. Uh, and I gave a run at that, but I, I lowballed it. You know, that's what you did it, it, during that period of time, um, unlike the past couple of years in particular. But uh, that ended up not panning out. So I went with option B and, uh, you know, option B ended up being a pretty good option for myself. And, you know, I was pleased with it. Yeah, 100 percent. Everything happens for a reason. You know, it, <laughs> that's huge. Wow. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It takes luck. And no matter what business that you're in, you need a little bit of luck to go your way again, regardless of how much you're analyzing, no much how, you know, how many doors that you're knocking on, being having a little luck on your side goes a long way. Definitely, man. That's nuts. That's crazy. Like, and and then so like when you picked up <coughs> the eight unit, like, did you have to um, you know, Brent put like a new property manager in place and like kind of do a lot in terms of stabilization to get that thing how you needed it to. So this building, the the rents were well below market value. Each of the tenants knew that. And Sunapi is actually a pretty unique market where you have Dartmouth Hitchcock uh, Hospital. You also have Dartmouth College, uh, uh, which is a grad school. And Sunapi is in general is just a nice little community. Um, so I just, I think I had turnover of two of the eight apartments when I purchased it, that I had to go in there and put down some floors, rip up some carpet, swap out appliances, countertops, you know, paint. Um, but my first, I, this is one of the things that most real estate investors think that I'm absolutely nuts about. And I agree <laughs> that they're absolutely right is I self-manage that property from Boston. Uh, I had a handyman within Sunapi that would help me out in the event that something happened, there was a leak or, you know, X, Y, Z, but all the tenant communication um, was something that I have done and was doing at that point. But selling real estate and helping my landlord clients in Boston facilitate their moves, you know, facilitate requests really prepared me very well for self-managing a property, you know, an hour and 25 minutes away. <laughs> I admire the crap out of that, man. That's actually like, especially, I mean, to be able to like, if you have the systems in place and like the boots on the ground to be able to retain that like nine or 10% that like a property manager would charge, like to be able to, I mean, you know, like just text a handyman, like, oh, you know, like so-and-so's drain is plugged. It's not working. And they're like, all right, man, like you mind going to check it out? And that's actually, <laughs> that's something that I'm kind of stepping into right now to kind of um, to kind of learn about because I grew up in Tuxbury and I bought my three family in Lemonstone oh, yeah. and I just finished house hacking that one. I'm back in Tuxbury now going to rent that unit. And that's kind of a, a big thing that I'm trying to put in place right now is, you know, just setting up the systems, having that go to handyman, plumber, electrician, you know, nearby that that I really like. Um, and basically just trying to stay the heck out of lemons, sir. And like, just like really try to like learn as much as I can about managing that building from afar. Well, self-managing that building, I should say, you know, and just kind of relying on the systems and, and the people and everything 
to like really like just like learn that lesson as much as much as I can, you know. I admire the crap out of that, man. That's that's awesome. Thank you. Again, uh, most real estate investors call me crazy for that, and I agree <laughs> with that. But if you do end up not learning from maybe this mistake that I made, networking is the most important thing for you. Um, spend a day in Lemonster and go meet with the you know three plumbers. Go meet with a couple electricians if you get their time for a coffee. Um, you know, meet them on a site that they're working on. Not just to go meet with them so they can see who you are and know that. The person that is texting them to go fix X, Y, and Z is a legit person. And you build credibility through that. In second, pay them quickly. When you get that invoice, fire that check um. <laughs> out right away um, because money always talks and that makes them happy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's absolutely huge. And yeah, I'm, I'm super excited <coughs> to... Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much like just try to really like test out or I guess like stress test the systems and, you know, kind of have like a a lineup of like, you know, your go to crew, I guess you could say. And then maybe like another layer of that, like if they're on jobs or not around or whatever the case is. And I'm excited. I am a tiny bit nervous. I'll be honest, though, because like it's only 40 minutes away from me and I'm I'm trying to act like it's like an hour and a half away. You know what I mean? And like, I feel like at some point I'm, I'm probably going to get a little stressed out, but like if I'm able to kind of weather the storm and, and just test out the strength of the team and everything and, and kind of pivot as necessary, I feel like it, it will go kind of a long way, you know? And yeah, no, <laughs> seriously, man. Like, I think that's like the coolest thing in the world and like your systems and, and the, the crew and stuff that you had to manage it from like a whole nother state, like an hour and a half away. Like that's, that's extremely impressive. I know, like you said, like a lot of people will be like, oh dude, you're crazy. Like that's absolutely nuts. But if your systems and the people are absolutely incredible, like you're making like another 10% on a return, you know, like that's crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. And getting going for me, you know, getting going, that was beneficial because it was just money that I was saving. And, you know, I always had a goal of continuously looking to, you know, build a portfolio. I had a really difficult time managing, I suppose, in air quotes, managing more than 30 units by myself. At that point, it became, you know, again, this is a second, you know, this is my side hustle more or less, right? Selling real estate in Boston is my big thing and around Boston is my big thing. But at 30 or so, 30, 35 is where it began to be a little bit more difficult for me to mentally handle it, I will say. In not being stressed out and not being discouraged. Definitely. I, I can imagine, man. I mean, like you said, especially as, you know, kind of like a, a side gig, I guess you could say, <laughs> you know, and, and still having like, you know, all the day to day of like the buyers, sellers, listing agents, like all the, the crazy, you know, running around and everything. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so take us kind of from um from the eight unit to that next building and like kind of making like the next leap in kind of like the investing journey like did you i guess just try to um try to like keep growing bigger and like just kind of take it on more and stuff or i guess what was kind of like the goal for for that third property yeah certainly you know i feel like i got lucky where i had the ability you know i i bought good properties i felt like um in good areas so as the market uh, continued to appreciate in 2017, 2018, 2019, I was doing a cash out refinance. I feel like, you know, once a year on a, on one of the properties, um, I take out that cash rents had also increased. So I was still providing myself a solid enough return, but I was taking that, you know, six figure check on a cash out refinance and plumping it into another property. Um, and that was what I had continuously done um, as well as of course, you know, saving money from my income and my job job. Um, to to grow a, a portfolio now that I have 72 units. Um, and what had helped was, of course, you know, selling that three family uh, in 1031 in that, which is an absolute awesome thing uh, to create wealth in a vehicle to be able to continue to, to buy more buildings and buy more assets uh, um, to 
you know, build that wealth that we're all looking for and that we're all talking about um, within, you know, our day to day and the goals that we set year over year. That's beautiful, man. I love that. I, I am super excited for for that aspect eventually when it hits and just be able to like, oh, crap, like I could cash that refi now. Like <laughs> I was hoping I could kind of do it yeah. a bit sooner because there's a little over 100K in equity in, in Lemon, sir. And like I just kind of went the HELOC route. And I was like, oh, like, what if I could do a cash out refi? The only thing that was a little troubling, though, was that my rate when I locked in last year is 2.6. And now it's like, what, three times at close to it? Well, it a little less. That's so but... tough. Is that a, <laughs> yeah. Is that a three family you said? Yes. Yep. That's one of those things where, you know, everyone's talking about the market and, and curious what's going to happen. I expect that we're going to see fewer homes sold in 2023, multifamily, single families, condos, um, because there's so many people that are locked into these incredibly low rates. Why would you move from a 3% interest rate now to, you know, let's call it six, six and a half. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be incredibly interesting, man. I mean, even in like the next couple of months, you know, like once we're kind of getting out of the winter time and, and breaking into spring and to kind of see what, um, see what happens. Yeah, definitely. It'll be an interesting time. <laughs> first, <laughs> first cycle that ha has a lot of uncertainty that I'm going through. You know, I have been able to build a nice little portfolio, but I don't know what that downside is. And I've been trying the past eight months, you know, reach out to every contact that I have that's either sold real estate through 2008, 2009, 2010, um, or was an investor in purchased properties right around that point in time. Time and how did they weather that storm? That's a great idea, man. <laughs> I like that a lot. I mean, even stemming back to kind of like the um, the network and and like that mentorship, you know, type of principle of like, oh crap, like you know, we're we're definitely going through something right now. You know, what does it look like, or like, what did it look like originally? And you know, how did you kind of like get through it? Like, whether like you said, it was on uh, like the agent side or on the investor side. Like, what did you kind of see? Like, maybe like, what's a couple of things that I should kind of be watching out for? Um, you know, maybe like battening down the hatches. Like, what's the, <laughs> what, what do I have to do? I guess you could say, you know, in the next so-and-so. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And there's so many people <laughs> out there that want to help, you know, and I think, you know, provide that insight that they've had in the past uh, going through that to, you know, help you build a portfolio and, and become the real estate king of Lemonster, you know? <laughs> it's, um, it's beautiful, man. Like that's, that's one thing that I do absolutely love about real estate is to your point, like most of us just want to help each other. And like, that's the beauty of it. You know, like, uh, what is it like a rising tide raises all ships? I, I think it is something like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's just, it's cool, man. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, like if, uh, like I need a CPA or something like, you know, let me reach out to a couple people and like, here's like four CPAs. Like, let me call them all up and, and stuff like that. Or, you know, oh, you know, uh, like I just had like a furnace go like, oh, you know, here's mass save, like heat loans, 0% interest. Like, you know, let me tell you about this. Like, it's, it's really cool stuff, you know? And like the more people to your point again, um, the more people that you talk to, like just in your travels, like the more people that you'll be able to like get opinions on, um, you know, just kind of go back and forth with trade war stories and, and succeed together, you know, and, and eventually like, it'll be good. <laughs> and I know that you've uh, created a forum, maybe on Facebook, uh, you know, to, to create that conversation. Um, how are you finding that so far uh, of people contributing? <laughs> Um, it's actually been very interesting, man. So the, um, are you talking about the Facebook group or yeah, dude, literally like I was blown away. So like, I've, I've been thinking about like some sort of like Facebook group or like some sort of like community, like something like to kind of pair with the podcast to like, just be able to like, you know, have people have conversations and, and just kind of keep it like really local. You know what I mean? Cause like, that's pretty much like the complete demographic that that i have been marketing to for the past couple of years and literally like it it blew up this morning man like i was blown away there's almost like 70 people in there now like literally just from like this morning i'm like oh my god what did i do 
you know, but that's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, man. I'm, I'm super excited about it, you know, and like literally like it just kind of has the vision (coughs) to create like that community. You know what I mean? Where like people of all experience levels, like if you're like just maybe like on the edge of getting into this for the first time to people buying like tons of units at a time, like how can we all just kind of like collaborate in one place and just help each other out? You know what I mean? And like a really local, like, like everybody, everybody will help each other, you know, it's fine. And like, yeah, it's, I'm blown away, man. I'm, I am very surprised like that it went like that, (laughs) but I'm excited to, um, just try to give as much value as possible and, and kind of share ideas with everybody and everybody exchanges everything and we'll see. (laughs) Yeah. Kudos for you to just doing it right. Like we talked about earlier, there's so few people that are actually doers now. Um, so taking that step, taking that leaf, throwing, you know, yourself out there to create your own group is, is, is something that I, you know, love. And, you know, part of the reasons why I've been following your podcast for a little bit now. So good stuff. Oh, thank you so much, man. It means a lot. <laughs> so, Phil, there is one question that I do ask every guest that I definitely want to ask you. That question is, how do you define wealth? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, I'm sure you get some absolutely wild answers and in, in so many different answers to this question. I would say creating wealth for me is being able to give my time and my money away to help others improve their situation of whatever that is. Um, I do a lot of nonprofit work um, for homelessness in the city, you know, at Boston, there's a fair amount of it. Uh, It's the absolute opposite side of what I sell day to day for my job, right? Beautiful condos and stuff. Um, And that's something that I've enjoyed doing was giving back. So Creating wealth is for me is being able to help others uh, either financially or you know contributing time. I love that man. That's super cool. And to be honest, I I think that's the coolest thing in the world too. You know how you literally have like both sides of the, I guess kind of like the I don't even know what to call it. You know what I mean? Like like both situations. Like you're you're like just giving a lot of value and and helping in different ways. That's super interesting, man. I, I like that a lot. That's awesome. It does make it a little difficult every once in a while when, you know, the couple that's looking to buy a couple million dollar property in Boston um, can't agree on what type of finishes they want within a house, you know, the condo that they want to buy. And then I go in, you know, totally opposite situation, of course, after and spend some time, you know, preparing meals or, you know, serving meals to people. And it's, it is, it's a rewarding thing, um, but definitely opposite. (laughs) That's great, man. I, that's, that's super admirable. That's good for you, man. That's, that's awesome. That's sweet. So I do want to ask you too, man. Um, actually I have it here. So my question is, do you read and what is your favorite business investing or real estate book that you would recommend to anyone? And this can be like, it doesn't necessarily have to be a book, like podcast, audio book, like anything that you consume. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am a reader. I'm a very slow reader. And I grew up, uh, you know, with an IEP and everything. I'm not, you know, a super educated guy and excelled growing up and through school. It's been a grind, you know, um, but I always had the ability to talk to people and I can tell a story. Uh, but, you know, the couple books that I've read that have really, you know, made an impact on me, I would say have been business wise. I really enjoyed Principles by Ray Dalio from the sense of structuring how he built his business and somebody that's super successful um, in just pulling a couple of things from that book has made me feel as I'm creating my own real estate team this upcoming year um, with a foundation of how I would like to see that kind of grow um, and how I would like to be, you know, the team leader, you know, uh, that I would like to have had worked for in the past sort of thing. Um, Grant Cardone, I'm not a huge Grant Cardone guy, but I thought, and I read his book, uh, Be Obsessed or Be Average, and that totally changed my perspective um, on so many things in just life. Uh, So I have to give him some credit for that. Even like I said, though, that I'm not a huge Grant Cardone follower, that book was very instrumental to me. That's great, man. I um. 
I have to reread principles. I, I got like halfway through it. I was listening to the audio book and like the way I did it, it was through, um, there's like an app called Libby and it like, it connects to like, I actually did Boston public library because it links up like audio books and like, it's all free and stuff like that. So it, it got returned when I was like halfway through So I kind of missed out on a lot, <laughs> but I'll definitely have to check out that, um, that Cardone right. book, man. I feel you on that one. <laughs> yeah really solid uh with principles i think i've read it i've read it twice uh, uh but i have picked it up put it down picked it up put it down just because of how big of a book it is um yeah. it is broken up into two halves but you know there's a lot of really good information as you're looking to build your business uh you know anybody looking to build business it, it just brings out a lot of questions that you can ask yourself um to really get clear in regards to where you want to go with it that's beautiful man I like that a lot. Yeah. Thank you uh, so, so much for coming on here, man. This this was absolutely awesome. This was a, a fantastic conversation. <laughs> well, Eric, I'm, Eric, I'm, I mean, um, it's not Eric. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm glad, glad you had me on. And, uh, you know, I, what's up? Oh, uh, I was just going to say, we're on um, like social media and stuff. Can you be found, Phil? I'll, I'll drop oh, everything yeah. down below. <laughs> Certainly. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Um, follow on Instagram, you know, like I mentioned, um, going and creating my own real estate team at Compass this year after running a, a co-leading a team, I should say, uh, Burbs to Boston the past couple of years. And I have a couple agents that are going to be joining with me, but to follow along, or if you have any questions looking, you know, to bounce ideas off of somebody that has owned a fair amount of real estate so far and built that business or if you're looking to get into real estate, um, hit me up on Instagram at Windrift Real Estate, and that's W-I-N-D-R-I-F-T. Uh, pretty funny story behind that name. It was originally my grandfather's lobster boat, um, and he was a huge mentor to me, just being a guy that retired from being a commercial lobsterman at the age of 84, pulling his own traps. Uh, and you know, I was happy to be able to name uh, my team name and my management company after that um after all the work that he put in that's the coolest thing in the world man wow i love that like you know how it goes back like that like deep connection that's it's always like really cool like when people have like i mean awesome names in, in general right but like hearing kind of like the story behind it and it's like oh you know ex exactly like you said you know this goes all the way back to my grandfather and like there's like that like you know kind of family like aspect and, and connection to it and everything that's great man i love that <laughs> good stuff i appreciate it yeah th thank you so so much for coming on phil that that was absolutely awesome man thank you i hope you have a fantastic new year and this episode will be out in like three weeks i believe i'm pretty sure i'll have it all on like social media and and stuff cool. like that but yeah okay cool that's great it was a pleasure um it was a pleasure connecting with you too man i, I don't think we've chatted much before before this no i've been i've <laughs> i have that you know dummy instagram account that i uh you know i messaged you off and followed you know that's where i kind of randomly picked up your account i don't know how um following other people maybe that we have in common or something like that and um you know i, I thought you really put out some really cool content you know axel are you familiar with axel yes definitely up in new hampshire aligned real estate partners yep yeah, so he's a good dude. Um, I'm going on his podcast in a couple of weeks, but I certainly got to get my Instagram uh, up to date after the new year once the business split is official. Yep. Because uh, you, you probably looked at it and you're like, whose account is this? This doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> um, it's just random reposts of you know stuff. <laughs> you know, I was trying to give it a whirl see how Instagram really works. I hear you, man. It, it's funny you say that too about Axel because literally, like, I listened to his podcast like religiously like on a loop because like that's the commercial like the small commercial side is kind of like the next like thing that i want to jump into eventually and like literally like i just i love his podcast so much man and like i recommend it to everybody i'm like you guys gotta check this out like he's a local guy like you know buys like a ton of big stuff really cool story it's um i love his podcast a lot i'm super excited to hear you come on it man i'm pumped yeah yeah i'm excited uh there'll be a cool one as well you know it, he he's he communicates so well with that podcast uh 
obviously, you know, his experience is off the charts with what he's been doing, raising capital. And, you know, it's so cool. Uh, but, you know, definitely he communicates and tells a story really well as well, as you do as well. But, um, you know, it's it's great seeing all these younger people get into real estate investing and, and looking to blow it up um, yourself. It's a Facebook group, throwing yourself out there, buying properties. Um, and then what he's doing is just so cool, you know. Thank you so much, man. It is it is a ton of fun, you know, and I uh, definitely wouldn't trade it for the world and excited to just kind of keep learning more stuff and trying to make more things happen, you know. <laughs> well, well, good stuff, uh, you know, uh, all good stuff. Um, so I, I think we're good, right? Yes, sir. Well, how I, long do you think this podcast, uh, like the episode will be? I'm just curious. Um. To be honest with you, the time on my lap, my computer is screwed up, so I don't even know what time it is. Um, price somewhere, <laughs> somewhere between like forty-five minutes and an hour. Usually, it's probably somewhere, somewhere around that. Cool, interesting. I'm always just curious, kind of how it, how it, you know, how I, I don't do a podcast, right? So I've always been curious, like how much content do you provide and how much content. Um, at when you're filming it, but then how much content actually gets whittled down after editing and stuff like that. <laughs> so to be honest with you, man, like with mine, I like to just, just like go like completely raw, like literally like leave everything on the table. Like there are a lot of people out there that try and make it perfect and, you know, have like a VA cut out like all the ums or like, like awkward pauses and stuff like that. I've always liked to keep it in. So then, you know, you'll be able to see from like, the first episode to like you know episode 400 or like whatever it might be like you'll be able to see the change like within yourself and like having conversations and stuff like that and like it's just like i don't know like a, i'm <coughs> having kind of like the like the authentic kind of vibe is definitely like a core value of mine i'm like you know what like if people don't like that you know like a pause uh, like a, something awkward or like you know what i mean i'm like I, I don't care like don't listen to it you know and but it's it's a lot of fun right. you know? yeah, exactly like, yeah and i mean i even tell people too man <coughs> on like the content front like literally just like putting stuff out there like literally like oh i forget who it was man somebody said a quote recently that i really liked i think it was like perfection it was something around like 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 perfection kills like good enough or something like that like if you like yeah. try to make it so perfect like it kills like your whole entire action and i like i just i really liked it man and to be honest with you like i try and tell people all the time literally and it, it's something that i need to get <coughs> a lot better at myself is literally like you know just like if you're out and about like you're in your business like like whatever it is like you're doing like anything at all literally just like turn your camera on turn it around and like tell people what the heck is going on you know like super raw like this is what i got going on today like you could be like covered in like you know like sewage water because like you're fixing a drain in the house or something like that like it's like the raw stuff you know like and it's it's the stuff that isn't isn't really glamorized and like people don't people don't talk about you know like the the nights where like you're trying to figure out what the hell to do and like you know the the things that come up you know and like a, i feel like especially from the investor side i feel like a lot of people go through those experiences but the conversations aren't had enough you know and like <coughs> like there was um there was one that in the unit that i just left now there was an exhaust fan in the bathroom and the bathroom was literally like like the size of this man like it was basically like a big coat closet right like a really really small room and there was an exhaust fan in there and there was a ton of mold on the bottom of the exhaust fan and i brought a handyman out to do a couple other things and i'm like oh you know like would you mind like just replacing this and you know it's it's kind of gross whatever and he's like dude honestly like you might just need to clean it and like the rest of that unit it, like was filthy man and like i feel bad because like there was little kids living in there and there was like spider webs all over the ceiling. Like it was just gross. You know, it was like no place for kids. And um, so I was like, oh, you know, like I'll I'll start like, you know, taking pieces off of it and stuff like that. And, you know, maybe it does just need to be cleaned. And OK, so one day, man, I started to literally just take it apart 
piece by piece. And I grabbed the hose that's supposed to vent outside. And I pulled on the hose, hoping that it stopped me like it was hooked up to something. I pulled the whole entire hose down because there was basically a finished ceiling. And then as soon as you took the fan off and like poked your head up, there was like a two foot space to another finished ceiling. And it was all like walled off up there. So it was pretty much like a crawl space type of thing. The hose was just dumping into the crawl space. Yeah. And knock on uh, wood, man, I'm very blessed that like the whole entire thing wasn't covered with mold. I don't know how, but like, yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I lucked out there, but like I, I. That's the unattractive side of real estate, yeah. right? You know, that, that gives people the 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 negative connotation that being a landlord is difficult to actually do when in reality you know you outsource that at the end of the day you did a little bit of handyman work but it wasn't rocket science to get that resolved right exactly and so like that was the thing man is like as soon as i pulled that hose down i was like oh okay like i kind of i kind of thought like something was going on here right so i turned my phone on and literally like I just like had the camera, like, you know, looking at it on the floor, like looking at the hole in the ceiling. And I was just kind of talking about it and like people were getting a crack out of it, man. And like, I mean, obviously, like I just posted it just for shits and giggles. Right. You know, like, oh, like this is, you know, this kind of just happened, like whatever, like people absolutely loved it. And like people were sharing like some of the some of the the crappy things like that that happened to them. I'm like, this is what I love. I'm like. Right. You know, all of a sudden people are coming out of the woodwork because it's like, oh, like me too. Like, you know, I had to deal with this like really crappy situation last week. And like, like this is a real thing that happens, <laughs> you know? And, but yeah, I mean, like just kind of posting like the raw, like, like this is what my day to day looks like. Maybe it's glamorous today. Maybe it's not. Like we're all going through stuff like this. Like it's cool, you know? Like, <laughs> And that's something that I'm going to try and myself, you know, one of my big goals in 2023 is start posting more content that actually has me in it, right? Opposed to just these nice little property photos that a photographer comes in and then just post that sort of stuff where, you know, I'm more front facing as well and providing content out there, um, you know, is so powerful and so simple to do if you just do it. It definitely is, man. I mean, it can be tough to kind of like get into the habit of doing it too. Like, especially if you're like, you know, just wrapped up in, you know, getting whatever task you're trying to get done. It's like, all right, I don't care about Facebook. Like, you know, I just want to get this done. Like, you know, but right. Any big goals that you have for 2023? <laughs> um, <coughs> I did have a goal originally to buy a six to 10 unit this year from like Lowell to Lemonster, but it's in the position that I'm in. It's pretty much like I had to put a ton of money into the house last year from like expected things and like a ton of unexpected things. So it's going to take a lot of kind of like catch up and stuff like that. So I'm thinking that it's going to be a, <coughs> a big year for like just trying to get like my agent stuff going a bit more and like just trying to, you know, take home and and put away as much as I can to kind of be in a better spot for next year. Um, mm. I think that's kind of what I'm looking at. You know what I mean? And yeah, I mean, just kind of like managing yeah, lemon stir from you Tuxbury. Need, yeah, you need those, you need those years of just grinding, saving and, and putting away. And I know that there's so many people out there that talk about, you know, raising capital on your first deal. I've never done that. I've always, you know, sold property, re cash out, refinance to continue to buy more property. Um, it's not necessarily the easy way, but if you do dedicate your time to, you know, creating your craft and growing that business of selling real estate, you know, you have the ability to, to add up some big numbers pretty quick to, to hit that goal of buying a six to 10 unit building. You're definitely but, right. You know, one of the matrix that I always look at, one of the matrix that I always look at when I buy a property that I spe specifically have to like turn over in, um, you know, renovate or, you know, tenant turnover, stuff along the lines of that, you know, I very rarely make a damn penny, I feel like in the first four to six months, if I'm lucky, right. Yeah. Uh, and that's just one of those things where it does take, you know, a little bit of time to get up and running with a multifamily, especially, you know, in the Northeast, where so many of the properties are, you know, 1910, 1920, you know, whereas if you go down south, you're looking, and if you find a property that's built in the 1960s, 
you know, that's like an antique down there where, you know, we have properties up here that are, you know, even 1880, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, in, in those 1880, in those 1910 uh, year built homes and buildings, there's upkeep to them, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of crazy, man. Literally, like, you know, if we were to go down south from seeing exactly you know like everything's normal like it just says like 1900 on the mls sheet like all right yeah it could be any time before that like who knows yeah seeing like 1960 be like dude that's like new construction up in the northeast like this building's nice you know like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we'll take a lot of you know I, w I wish that i was buying more of those buildings for sure <laughs> <laughs> i know like oh building without lead paint like after 1970 cool all right man like that's that's pretty <laughs> awesome <laughs> but yeah i mean we'll see yeah. <laughs> you know but yeah this <laughs> phil this was absolutely awesome man seriously like i'm i'm super excited cool well thanks kyle appreciate it um and looking forward to seeing more of your own success all right man you as well man thank you so much i'll talk to you soon thank you talk to you oh kyle last question yes are we able to add that little piece after we kind of did that sign off into the to the clip or no uh, yeah. Which um, which part of it? I can tell my um, VA. Just kind of what we were just talking about. I thought that was pretty good, like authentic conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. Totally. Yeah. I'll, I'll put a note uh, in that. And let me just ask you one more question. You know, for you in you've interviewed, a, you know, 110 people or whatever it is now. Right. You're coming up on that number. Like, is there any feedback that you'd give me in regards to my conversation from today? And be super cool. honest. I know that we haven't met or anything like that. <laughs> no seriously man like i thought it was phenomenal like i thought it flowed like really well like i think you yourself have a, a really good um skill and like telling stories and everything man and like <coughs> i loved it man like it, it was cool like i feel like i was on the edge of my seat you know with some of the stories like oh you know like that's this is an awesome story i was like all right dude like i'm pumped to hear this <laughs> you know i think it, i think it was really good man i, I liked it a lot all right. Good stuff. Um, you know, certainly, you know, once it goes out, I'll pump it up to my network and hopefully that uh, creates a few more followers for you, you know, as you continue to do more and more episodes. And uh, more importantly, we got to do a beer sometime. Uh, I know I'm you down. do the uh, the Gardner, the the Gardner um, events. It's a little too far for me, but maybe Tewksbury or somewhere in between Gloucester, Boston and Tewksbury, I can certainly meet up with you. And, uh, you know, we could put, uh, you know, a handshake on all this. Yeah, I'd love to, man. I actually, like I said, so I'm living in Tewksbury now. So I'm like a heck yeah. of a lot closer to um to your neck of the woods. I'm cool. down, man. 100%. Let's do it. Good stuff. We'll, we'll do it in the new year for sure. Um, well, awesome. I appreciate your time. And thanks again for having me on, Kyle. You as well, man. Thank you so much. All right, guys. That concludes our Creating Wealth podcast episode for today. I want to thank every single person that has listened this far. It really means a lot to know that people can learn from me and with me as we build wealth together. Hopefully you can take home at least one thing from this podcast that will improve your life just a little bit. If you could, please check me out on social. That's at Kyle Curtin Real Estate on Instagram, Facebook, and I'm on Bigger Pockets. Until next time, let's build together.